Um, so yeah, Riba. Um, where do I begin? I, I grew up in Nairobi, mm. and uh, there's this sort of lingua franca that we use a lot in the city. Um, it's called Sheng. Mm. Um, so Sheng is this amalgamation of Swahili, English, and so many other words from very many tribes, because um, we have 42 tribes in Kenya. Mm. So sometimes just words from different tribes find themselves in this little language. Um yeah, it's a very informal language um, that people speak, um, friends. Yeah, we rarely use informal situations. So riba is a word from that particular, from Shen. Mm. Um, and it means, it has many meanings, actually. It means short stories. It means news. Mm-hmm. Um, it just generally means chatter, chatter between people, yeah. um, sort of like the grapevine type of thing. Um, so yeah, just by the choice of that word already, um, it was clear that I was trying to tell a mm-hmm. story. Um, though in in um, in Kiswahili, according to the Swahili dictionary, mm-hmm. riba is interest that money earns in the bank. That's just it, by the way. Mm. Yeah, so um, that's how I ended up calling this compilation Riba. Mm. And my intention was just to pick experiences that I had gone through in my life in the Nairobi CBD and kind of impose this experiences and stories on fictional characters. Mm. Yeah, and that's how you end up with Riba. So that's the cover right there. Mm-hmm. Um vintage pc yeah i had a little write-up um that actually ended up changing Mm. um i changed it to a poem um but i'll update my website Mm. um yeah let's go to the next one the next yeah that Mm. so this was a time i was really obsessed with african masks yeah, they, they just baffled me. I was like, whoa, these people so many years ago and like they come up with such vivid characters, you know. Mm. Um it's, it's it's to date it's still very enamoring and I often wonder like how how on earth did they do this? You know. Um so yeah, I I happen to get this from a museum's website, I think it's the Met. Um, they have a section where there's art that you can use under the Creative Commons license. Wow. So anybody can just go oh, and wow. get. Yeah, so they take photos of their catalog and then um, depending on what it is you're interested in. So let's say um, I'm, I'm from the Kamba tribe in Kenya. Mm. So I often go there, look for Kamba beadwork. Mm. Um, cause okay, that also points to another interesting dynamic about artwork that is African and is situated in other museums. Mm-hmm. This is the only way I can access this artwork. I can't go physically to experience it. Mm. So my philosophy is that if I can use this in my artwork, well and good, you know, mm. um, I haven't violated any copyrights. Um, it's adding another layer to my work. So yeah, this is um a lady called Mkanya. Mm. <laughs> um and the story behind this was that she just I was walking to class um and then this lady just stops me and asks me, "Hi, I'm looking for a taxi to this particular place." And in my mind, I'm like, I'm late. Why are you stopping me? Just let me go to class. Mm. Um, and then the little excerpt just ends there. Mm. So that is reflective of those mornings where I would go to class. So arrive to the CBD by, we call them matatus. In South Africa, you call them taxis. Mm. Yeah, you get to the stage and then there's this long walk to class. And then all these people you meet in this commotion. So yeah, that was just something I picked from there. Amazing. Um, yeah, let's go to the next. Yes. It's crazy what you mentioned about, um, you know, having access to African art that's now in Africa. In a way, reappropriating it in your own work, you're bringing, bringing it back to Africa. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. 
Um, so this particular image, I got it off of one same museum photo, photos and stuff. Mm. Uh, so this is a, it's the, the original photo is of a Ugandan warrior. Wow. Um, from from the Jire tribe. Um, yeah, yeah. If I remember correctly. Um, so this character, I made the. I kind of reenacted this scene that once happened to me. So in 2013 in Kenya, we had um, terrorist attacks in one of our biggest shopping malls mm. um, and uh, the Al-Shabaab claimed responsibility. So because of that attack, suddenly there was this stigma towards bearded men. So having a beard was actually a bit dangerous for a young Kenyan man at the time. Um, there were cases of abductions, um, you know, because now people are paranoid, you know, the, the state is paranoid mm. uh, because of this terror attack. So this one time I was heading for an exam, actually, for an afternoon exam, um, just walking through the CBD and I was stopped by this cops um, just randomly. Yo, come. So produce your ID. Let's see if you're actually a Kenyan citizen and all that. So, yeah. Um, Long story short, I made this character to kind of just depict um, the cops at the time. Mm. So this project, uh, the way I made it, uh, it had an accompanying excerpt, mm. but it was all in sharing and I didn't get the time to translate it. Mm. But uh, the, the text that accompanies this is just like a four or five sentence sort of exchange between myself and the cop. Who are you? Mm. I state my name, where are you going? Can I see your ID? And then I walk away very annoyed and very pissed. Mm. Yeah, so that was that. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's go to the next one. Um, yeah, this was this was this was really interesting. This was actually a screen, this was like a screenshot of a video. Um, the piece itself is a video. Um, so it's, this is a traditional Meru. Meru is yet another tribe, mm. but it's a traditional Meru witch doctor. Okay. Um, yeah, I just really liked, I, I really loved the vibe more than anything. I won't even try and be too deep with this one. Mm. Um, yeah, this, this felt like one of those freestyle pieces. Mm. I have this photograph i am trying to figure out how can i make this look good mm -hmm. you know um <laughs> yeah and this 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 is what came about um <laughs> i like that it doesn't have to be deep <laughs> it's, exactly it's also important it's to say yeah cool. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's amazing <laughs> It's also um, quite nice when you enjoy something or enjoy looking at something where you enjoy it, but you, you yourself mm -hmm. aren't always quite sure why. Mm. Yeah, exactly. That in exactly. itself is, that question alone makes it meaningful. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this next piece, um, kind of like a similar story. So I think what I was also trying to achieve with this um, little collection mm -hmm was to do some sort of a magical realism kind of thing. Mm. Um, you know, like this is a bird wearing a suit, looking dapper. <laughs> um, I mean, that that's just <laughs> not normal. <laughs> mm. um, but yeah, I, I find like this is, these are some of the realms where I thrive so much, just really, really pushing the boundaries. So I remember Stephanie, you mm. asking me like, do I think about the character? and the setting and all. So it's stuff like this that I try to do. So the instances where I'll illustrate a human being um, and the other instances where I'll just go a bit crazy and just do this bad mm. man wearing a mm. suit. <laughs> um, mm. So the story behind this, uh, it's also fictional. Um, let me just try and translate it directly from Sheng. Let me see how I'll do. Um, so his feathers are green and pink and gray. What's his deal? Um, I'm a bit, I'm a, I'm a bit, I'm a bit inconvenienced that he's in my way and I'm trying to get off the bus. Today I was heading to the thrift store, um, 
the lady at the shop told me to come back on Tuesday when she gets new stuff. There's this pair of vans that I've really, really been looking for. Let me see if today will be my lucky day. Yeah, that's that's just a little excerpt that um, accompanied this piece. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah, so um, in my mind, this this guy was in my way, uh, and I'm trying to just like alight this bus. I'm so excited to get my new pair of vans. Um, I've mm-hmm. been looking forward to this the entire week. It, it just I can't just get my hands on this pair any sooner. Yeah.